Welcome to the Soul Art Podcast. I'm your host and guide, Will Caminata. This is a conversation episode where I bring a special guest to share with us their spiritual awakening journey and their expertise so that we can all be inspired, educated, and feel connected as one. Hello, beautiful soul. I'm so grateful and honored that you chose to listen to the Soul Art Podcast. And today, for the first conversation episode, I had the pleasure to talk to Jay Bradley, who is a breathwork healer and teacher and founder of Breathe On It. He's also the creator of Chakra Bombs and the author of Live, Look, and Feel, the 12-week guide to live longer, look younger, and feel better. Jay also happens to be a really good friend of mine and my breathwork teacher. So this conversation episode had a very friendly family energy. We talked about his spiritual awakening, how his childhood traumas and the repression of his sexual identity have affected his adult life, but also how they have been catalysts to his awakening journey and how he's overcome this lack of self-worth and became this beautiful soul and healer that he is today. Like I mentioned, Jay is the founder of Breathe On It. So we also talked about how he found his purpose in helping others through the power of breath work and how breath work can permanently shift you. I hope you enjoy the show. And if you do, please hit the subscribe button, leave a comment or a review and share this episode with your friends. Enjoy it. Jay. I'm so grateful to have you here and excited to have you as my first guest. Thanks for joining us. No, I'm honored. There's no pressure or anything, but we (laughs) got to make this podcast strong and powerful. Yes, yes. You're the first and a very special guest because you're my good friend and I'm grateful to have you in my life and grateful to have this conversation. Um, Yeah, thank you so much, Will. I'm happy to be here. Right. So... um, I would love to talk about your breathwork, uh, wonderful breathwork um, teaching and uh, your chakra bombs and all the wonderful things you're doing. But just before we get into that, I'd love to talk about your spiritual awakening journey, like so that we can get to know a little bit more about you, Jay Bradley, as, as a person first before... Um, the healer and the teacher. So here at the Soul Art Podcast, we talk a lot about spiritual awakening, um, the healing journey, and the expansion of consciousness, of the one consciousness. Um, It's something that I actually expanded on in the first episodes. But basically, I believe that the spiritual awakening is a journey, right? It's not just something that happens to us one one day and then we awaken and then life is full of light and bliss right i believe I that we are always ex- expanding our consciousness we're always awakening to different extents in different levels um and and i say that every aha moment that we have is us awakening just a little more right having said that I understand when we attribute our awakening to a specific, oftentimes challenging and difficult, painful moments in our lives. And sometimes it seems like the more pain we endure, the bigger or the deeper the awakening, right? If we um, acknowledge and assess the, the pain and heal it. So um, in your bio, you say that you've been on a spiritual and self-growth path for over 30 years, right? So for you, in your journey, was there a triggering moment, like a catalyst to your spiritual awakening? Was it like a collection of moments or do you feel like it was more of a gradual awakening? 
Yes. I mean, really, we're on the journey since birth, aren't we? But I think if, yeah. if enough trauma, enough pain builds up, there is a bit of a, a bursting point where we're like, you know, enough of this. There's something I got to do about this. And, and that happened for me around 20 years old. You know, we all have our stories and we all have our own pain, our own trauma. Mine was really about bullying, you know, but, but pretty major bullying from kindergarten all the way through high school. And I was a gay kid growing up in small town Canada. And so in a time, you know, 50 years ago, when it wasn't really very accepted. So there was a lot of, of uh, literally physical fights being attacked for who I was. Um, and, and along with that, there, of course, developed just a, a, <laughs> a real lack of self-esteem, quite frankly, you know, questioning my very core, like mm-hmm. my worthiness. And pretty much from being a baby onward, I was also sick. So I had a lot of breathing issues, ironically, <laughs> breathwork mm-hmm. teacher and healer, allergies, asthma, but also a, a numbness, I would call it depression. You know, I don't know if, if it was in fact depression or literally just a, a kind of like I gave up. I'm, I'm just tired. I was exhausted mm-hmm. from, from as far back as I can remember. So my challenges, you know, those were unique to me. But what happened around 20 years old is I just knew deep down that I deserved to feel good. Mm-hmm. I like, I knew, I knew somehow that I didn't have to be sick all the time and that I definitely didn't have to be depressed and that, you know, I was this kind of being of light and I deserve to, to love myself. And mm-hmm. so I started to just do a lot of reading, a lot of self-help reading. And that's kind of how my journey started. Mm-hmm. And was there a moment that you just felt like I can't go any lower than this? Like, maybe like a, a, you hit rock bottom or something like that, or you felt like it was just more, again, more gradual, just. Yeah, that's a good question. I think it was more gradual, actually. Really, from as far back as I can remember, there was kind of this, this dampening of my spirit, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I think it was a really gradual process. And it's been just as gradual, as you mentioned, to kind of get out of that. Mm-hmm. I wish it would have just happened overnight and <laughs> suddenly mm-hmm. you'd feel mm-hmm. great. You know, and I think that's a great thing you said. And I, I would love people to really acknowledge that, that it is a lifelong process and yeah. we're never going to totally arrive. But what I do believe is the heaviness, the dense energy, you know, a lot of that, that stuck and resistant mm-hmm. energy. Once we clear the majority of it, really life does feel good most of the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah. that is a great thing to work towards. Yeah. And I believe it's, it, it, it all starts with awareness, you know, having the awareness um, that you've gone through something and now you have the choice to choose differently or you have the choice to stop uh, playing the victim um, of the circumstances and choose to be, choose to own your story, choose to be the protagonist of your life, right? And it's I guess- difficult one of the things that help like you mentioned is start reading and and knowledge um and i but i do think that um usually it comes with something that's very painful right and sometimes it's like a one one one-off thing like for me for example when i was eight i lost my dad and it was very traumatic and i would say for me that was like the beginning of my spiritual awakening because i started questioning a lot of things because i was feeling a lot of pain Right. So I guess sometimes pain is can be a a catalyst and can give you the awareness and can push you forward into awakening or into healing. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, how do you feel about about pain being a catalyst? Yeah, I think I always say and my motto is your pain is your power. So once you can move through it have using it as a catalyst then on the other end of it it's amazing you can use it to help a lot of people i absolutely believe you know the dark night of the soul the 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 major death close to you the illness the the loss of a maybe a job even or a relationship Mm -hmm. i certainly had a the loss of a seven-year partnership around 28 so that was one of my dark nights of the soul Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. although most of my path was was very sort of a gradual and general process of pain Mm -hmm. and trauma. But yes, I can completely relate. The pain is a great motivator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some, and oftentimes these traumas as, um, uh, as children show up 
in adulthood, right? In the in mm-hmm. patterns. And I, that's why I think awareness is, is so important because you might associate things and understand like, oh, okay, this is happening because of my lack of self-love because I was bullied when I was a kid, right? Did you feel like, you're, like for example, your bullying as a kid would show up in a, in a specific way uh, as in your adult uh, hood life? Absolutely. Uh, attracting, you know, although only, I only had the, the main seven-year partnership, which was actually pretty good, the rest of my dating life has been kind of attracting people who didn't treat me very well, you know? So not valuing myself enough to, to even think I'm worthy of, of attracting like an, uh, an amazing partner or somebody who's going to treat me well uh, in my finances, you know, mm-hmm. never quite enough, <laughs> always struggling with my finances, spending more than I made. So another sort of feeling victimized because mm-hmm. I spent most of my life in victim. Mm-hmm. And it's difficult, especially when you're programmed from a young age, mm-hmm. you know, when the world kind of has worked against you, there's, there's like, there's proof that, yeah, I'm a victim, right? Because I got this, 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 mm-hmm. this, this. And so to get out of that does take, <laughs> take some effort and some commitment. But I would say it's shown up in, in those two main areas and mainly my confidence, you know, believe it or not. I mean, I'm a different person today, thanks to the different practices I've used. Mm-hmm. But most of my life just struggled to feel worthy, struggled to, to really speak up and, you know, own who I am in the world. Mm-hmm. And probably would have done some more performing, some more singing, had I, you know, felt confident about who I was. There's a lot of things I think I missed out on mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of that. Yeah. And I guess um, being gay didn't help much <laughs> early on <laughs> or discovering that you, you, you were gay. And I think we have, we have a lot of things in common, but that's one of the things that we, we have in common. We have similar paths as gay men because, and I share that in, in my book, which you've read and you, you wrote yes, you've it's written a review, beautiful review um, that I lived years of non-acceptance towards my sexuality and just, basically trying to fit in, trying to be someone else and living with guilt and shame and self-loathing. Um, what, what was it like for you? What was your journey to self-acceptance and self-love? Um, and also, you, I think you come from a different generation too, so it m- must have been different. I don't know if, if it was harder, but it m- it's definitely different, right? Yeah, there was definitely a lack of, of education and more ignorance, I think, for sure, especially where I grew up. And, you know, I would say, I would say I, I prayed every night and I prayed. That was my religion, my spirituality when I was a really young kid. It was like, please change me. Please take this away. I mean, what kind of prayer is that, right? Yeah. But that was my prayer. It's like, no. This, so I knew from a really young age, I knew from age four or five. And so growing up with that with nobody to talk to, mm-hmm. you know, and then reading that it's wrong or it's a sin or all these other things. Uh, there was, yeah, the shame, the shame started at a really young age and the guilt and just not, again, not feeling valid or worthy somehow in the world. Mm-hmm. And how, how did you manage to let go of that guilt and shame? Cause it's heavy, right? Yeah. I speak for my experience. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just heavy. I don't think anybody um, should live with guilt or, or, or shame. Yeah. Well, I mean, the first thing I did was move away from a smaller town into a big city at 17 years old. So I knew for my own survival mm-hmm. that I would have to get out. <laughs> and so I made the move. And that was a great first step to being free, to you know, being around like-minded people, to finding friends who, who supported me in that. Mm-hmm. And and then that's kind of you know where the journey began, with with just delving into, right. to the spiritual world versus the religion you know and learning all about mm-hmm. self love and self acceptance and forgiveness, and and that was so exciting to me. <laughs> it was my passion. It still is my passion. You moved from um, Thund- Thunder Bay Bay in Canada to Toronto. Okay, and then you moved yeah. from Toronto to LA, which is where you are now. It, Actually, Toronto to New York okay. and New York to L.A. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I've been and around. Do you think that helped you to like live in big cities where people, in theory, were more accepting or maybe you found, you know, your tribe, you know, 
performers, you know, artists. Do you right. think that helped you in your journey? It definitely did. Yeah, it definitely did. And nothing against, in fact, I think my, I think Thunder Bay is now super advanced. <laughs> they have mm -hmm. like transgender day in high schools and wow. they've come a long way. Yeah. And so it's nothing against them, but I would say, yeah, in general, bigger cities are, you know, more open, more accepting, and you can find a place to, to really belong. So mm -hmm. I definitely felt that was, that was the right step to take. Yeah. And I can relate to this because I think when I was 20, I went to live in, in London, which was a much more accepting place where at least I was away from, from my environment, from, from, you know, my family and friends. Um, not that I didn't want to be with them or that I, that I didn't love them, but I feel like sometimes you really need to get out of that environment that you were raised in, in order yes. to discover other things and to find who you really are and just find the freedom. And sometimes we're, we think that the freedom is, is outside. It is, it's in a different country or in a different house, in a different relationship or in a different job. And it does help, but we might find that it's not because the freedom is really, I believe, inside of us. You know, because you might move countries, you might move, um, change jobs or go to different relationships, but you're still going to carry you. Right. Yes, <laughs> so I think exactly. that when you, I think what you're saying, it all comes down to feeling that sense of worthiness and self-love and self-acceptance, which is something that you're going to carry wherever you are, you know, whoever you're with. And I think that that uh, for me, that's what I've learned in, in my journey that, you know, self-love is really the key, you know. Yes. And it's a it's a long road. <clears throat> and I think sometimes when we can take ourselves out of the actual physical experience, like the whatever, the abusive relationship or step out of the addiction or, or move towns, you know, mm -hmm. I think that can help, though, on the journey as well because removing ourselves from something that might feel toxic gives us a little breathing space yeah. Yeah. to then dig in deeper and focus on ourselves. Yeah, and I think I've heard a, a quote, it was something like, you, you need to get out of the environment that you were hurt in order to heal. Ooh, and, you yes. know, not, and not that um, it's a bad environment, sometimes right. it is, but you for yourself i think it helps when you just get out of that environment and then you can focus on your on yourself on your healing healing sometimes we do that with uh consciously like with purpose right i know i need to do some healing so i'm going to remove myself from this environment for a little while and sometimes we, we just follow um our passion you know or, or trust our intuition i think that's similar to both of us we just had a dream right to be become artists and and we just follow that dream and and that purpose and i think it was part of the already the beginning of the the healing for for both of us for sure i agree and so what at what moment or what prompted you to start looking for a more more holistic approaches towards your healing you know, even I remember as a kid doing massage on my family members and sending like white light through my hands. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but it's like, yeah, it makes sense. Let me just put my hands on them and send some energy and they would feel better. So I feel like it was, as all of us, I, I think we all have gifts in that realm. But I think it was, it was kind of an innate thing that I picked up as a kid. But I would say I just started to bring in the body, mind, spirit thing, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20, as I was reading the self-help books and all of the personal growth stuff, I would visit healers. I would visit psychics. I would try a whole bunch of modalities, including natural paths and trying to work on my health as well and my energy, my vitality. So it, it, was, it was a bit of a project. Like, I'm going to do whatever it can do. <laughs> I'm not going to stop until I feel good. Mm -hmm. And I, I never gave up hope. And so I have tried a bunch of things. I mean, I, you name it, I've done it, uh, you know, past life regression, hypnosis, EFT, pranic healing, theta healing. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many more. So and, and it was conscious. You had the purpose of healing and then you started looking for 
different approaches. Did you yeah. at any point feel um, overwhelmed by the maybe the amount of things that you've tried or the amount of options that you had? Because I, I feel like oftentimes on a healing journey, sometimes, and I, I would say that from my experience too, when I, um, when I was having one of my big awakenings from back in 2013, I was, my mind was just a little bit scattered because I wanted to read everything. I wanted to watch mm -hmm. every Oprah Soul Sunday on YouTube and I wanted to find different healing modalities. But I think that maybe subconsciously I was still looking for something outside of me. Mm -hmm. And I think that can happen in the, in the early stages when you start looking for, you know, healing. Yes. You, you're going to a breathwork healer or a sound healer healer or a, a Reiki or because you're still expecting them to heal you. Did you ever feel like this? Yeah, I would say not overwhelmed, but discouraged, you know, because I would go with the intention, okay, I'm going to shift something. And probably each time I did shift something, but it wasn't that big, like, Oh my God, I'm fixed. <laughs> it mm -hmm. was very subtle. And so I would become discouraged often. But like, mm -hmm. why bother? This mm -hmm. is not working. Maybe I just need to settle for the fact that I'm, you know, unhappy and numb, <laughs> mm -hmm. and a little paralyzed. So I, yeah, that was the big thing for me was, was becoming discouraged. But again, under the surface, there was always this, mm -hmm. I, I feel like something's going to show up and, you know, it's going to really, really shift things for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a, a, a real important thing to share with, with our listeners uh, that might be going through um, or might be looking for different healing modalities um, that they do help in different levels. Um, the shift happens. I guess sometimes we need to manage our expectation because we might expect to have a really big and deep shift. And sometimes it doesn't happen. And I think that's mm -hmm. when we might be disappointed or discouraged, right? But I, I loved what you said that the shifts are happening, even if we're not aware of them, right? And I guess when we manage our, our expectations and we sort of trust and let go and really go to a healing session with an open heart um, and just, you know, surrender and really trust, that, that might be the best healing session, you know, someone will ever have, you know. So I guess that's an important thing to, to share with everybody listening. Definitely. And I wanted to, to just recap what you said around, you know, I was also reading every single book out there, every self-help book possible mm -hmm. for many, many, Dr. Many Wayne years. Dyer. I, oh, I read every, except one, <laughs> all of his books. I mean, everybody's books I've read. And then uh, this was every morning for years and years and years. And then I remember one day a number of years ago, a friend said, you know, you read a lot of these books, like maybe it's time for you to step up and just start mm -hmm. teaching or start sharing. And, mm -hmm. and it really stayed with me. And I have to say, ever since it's been really difficult for me to pick up a self help book, mm -hmm. because I, I kind of feel like I got the wisdom inside and nothing against all these teachers, right. Mm -hmm. But finding, finally realizing, oh, my God, all the answers are within, but it took me decades to get mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a great awareness that there's nothing really new out there being said yeah. and the truth and all the answers are, are inside. Yeah. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And I guess when you, when you read a self help book or a spiritual book with that awareness, it feels different too. Right. Right. Cause it's, I guess you use it more of more as a, as a, maybe a catalyst for a little bit for more awakening or for, for a, an insight you know, you can always Definitely. learn from other people's experiences and other people's lives. You know, I guess that that's the best self-help book is when you read someone about someone's lives and what they've gone through and how they've overcome it. Yeah. You're and so right. we're getting to the breath work uh, moment. How did you find it and why did you love it so much? Yeah, well, I will preface and say breath work I, I did experience it probably about 20 to 25 years ago. 
And I remember having a profound experience on a lady's table, but I didn't really know what it was. <laughs> she laid me down. We did some breathing. And before you know it, I was sobbing with a, a yeah, teddy bear. As most of us like in, our, in the first. Like, what is going on? Like, so, I mean, I'm talking so much just grief and, and uh, emotion. And then I kind of moved on to other modalities. Like I said, I've tried many things. And then had another experience about 10 years ago with rebirthing. And again, really profound went on to do my own thing yeah yeah and then three years ago i was invited to a men's group a gay men's group it was five five men were there i kind of went reluctantly I'm like i don't do a lot of gay things <laughs> mm -hmm. and also i'm like eh, what is this breathwork circle mm -hmm. but i have to say and even though the teacher didn't say much he just kind of showed us the breath we laid down it was the mo seriously the most healing and profound experience of my entire life i will say that and i can I mean, I was sweating, I was soaked, and then I'm freezing and shivering yeah. and uh, sobbing and making strange noises. And all my chakras, all of my energy points began to pop open and throb and pulsate. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, had never felt my chakras before that moment, actually. So it was really just, and I knew, I just knew there was some deep, deep healing going on that I couldn't understand. But I do remember my sacral mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. my hips and my genitals that the whole pulsating and opening and i knew that shame and all the stuff i was carrying the sexual just, repression yes all of that was just i just knew it was just healing and releasing so i was hooked from that moment forward mm -hmm. yeah i guess that's one of the the most powerful things about breath work for me too is just that feeling of releasing yeah. of letting out because I felt I had the same experience. I, I was in Thailand and I did a, a rebirthing session and it was exactly what you described. And that I just felt this letting go of, especially for me, it was very much my throat, um, just yes. crying out loud and shouting because it was something that I, yes. I didn't do before and I needed it to do to release it. So I guess, and I see that with, with, friends and, and clients that they release a lot somehow either through crying or shouting or sounding or moving their bodies i feel like breath work has this power to release the emotions and really get get us in touch with the with the spirit with the higher self or the guides right yes and you know breath is spiritum in latin which means spirit Mm -hmm. So how amazing that just breathing, this thing that's free from, yeah. for all of us, it connects us to spirit like nothing else. Yes, amazing. it's amazing. So for anybody who um, is new, completely new to this, and they have no idea what we're talking about, how, hmm. and I know it's difficult to um, describe the experience because it's very unique, very individual and also, I guess, the energy of the day and the mood also um, influences. But how would you um, describe the session that you do? Or, and just briefly, like, what is it and like, what happens in our bodies and emotionally? Yeah, well, I always like to talk about the benefits of breath work. And there's many. And, I, you know, physically, we were detoxing our body. We're bringing in a lot of oxygen, flushing out toxins, really, really accessing and, and feeding our digestion and our brain health. Mm -hmm. We are boosting immunity and also releasing physical pain and tension in the body. So there's a lot of physical things that will happen. We also release oxytocin, which is a feel good hormone, mm -hmm. you know, endorphins, which is like really feel good as well. And then also DMT, which a lot of people are learning more and more about dimethyltryptamine. And that helps us to kind of leave our physical body to get more connected with spirit. Uh, and then emotionally, and that's always the most exciting is, is it's like we uncork very quickly, uncork emotions. Yeah. And, you know, you know, firsthand from sharing breath work with people that unexpected stuff comes up. Like suddenly we're, we're filled with rage or so much anger uh, at ourselves, at God or at a family member uh, or emotion and sadness and a lot of grief. Mm -hmm. And it's totally unexpected. And that's the beauty of it is, is if we just trust and use the breath, the emotion will show up. We get to feel it so we could heal it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, then, and then also aligning the chakras and really opening and balancing those seven main energy points nothing to me works as quickly and powerfully 
as, as a deep breathing practice. Mm -hmm. So that's like, there, there's a lot of benefits. I say we permanently shift and I absolutely stand by that. Each time we breathe, we permanently shift. We permanently rewire our brain, mm -hmm. all the little pathways, our emotions, all the resistance and traumas, literally permanently shifting through. So there's, there's so many benefits. And a typical session, obviously now online because of mm -hmm. COVID, whether it's in person or online, you know, we, we just work together to discuss what's going on, setting an intention, and then creating a beautiful space to breathe and lay down. And, I, you know, we play music, a great soundtrack, and that's a big part of it is the music. And just guiding, uh, guiding my clients through the session. And sometimes we do some energy release. Mm -hmm. If there's energy stuck in their body. Uh, I also personally love Ho'oponopono. It's a Hawaiian forgiveness practice. So my breathwork sessions often include that, which is a wonderful process of, you know, taking back your power. We talked about mm -hmm. being a victim. So it's really Through owning your part. Yeah. Yeah. And saying, I'm sorry for my part yeah. in, in what's going on in relationships, et cetera. Yeah. yeah. And then there's a lot of relaxation time at the end. It's yeah. Process to feel the shifts. So it's a beautiful, it's usually 60 to 90 minutes. Yeah. And I love something you say uh, that breath work cracks us open. Ooh, I forgot about that one. It right? does. I love that. Cause it cracks us open like a nutcracker. Boom. Yeah. Like a nutcrack. It really feels that way. And, and also something um, that I wanted to bring up is, is breath work. It's called breath work for a reason because it is work, it is. right? You breathe and it, you find a lot of resistance within, you may find a lot of resistance within the session because it's a lot of work to keep breathing. And sometimes the emotions might be overwhelming. Your mind wants to trick you and, and you know, wants to make you stop breathing. And I think that's also something that you say, the breath work is like um, CrossFit. Spiritual CrossFit. Spiritual CrossFit. I say that <laughs> meditation is the soul workout. Yes, yes. You say that a breath works is um, spiritual CrossFit because it, it does really feel like that. It feels like it's a lot of intense work, but you get a lot of uh, benefit. You get the reward at the, 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 the second part of the session. And that's something that I always, um, when I'm guiding a session, I always tell them the more you give in, and I know you do that too, the more you give in the beginning, in the first 20, 25 minutes, the more you breathe, even if it's um, uh, overwhelming or tiring, or if you find resistance, you'll get a lot at the end, right? Exactly. The more you put in, the more you get out. And I always say the first three, four or five minutes is the, is the most work. Mm -hmm. And then often your body does kind of start to breathe itself. And that's where a lot of the magic happens. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we probably should mention that if people are breathing at home, there's some things that happen with the body. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we get the numbness and tingling in our hands and they might even go like claws. It's a part mm -hmm. of the breathwork process. It's just carbon dioxide leaving the body. It can happen in the feet too. And a lot of people yawn, mm -hmm. you know, or get a little bit of dry mouth or get a little lightheaded just in the beginning. And so that's all normal. And it uh, all comes back to normal once we stop breathing, relax at the end. Yeah. And with everything, with every practice, I guess, the more you practice, the more, um, you relax, the more you trust, right? Because you might have a really great experience um, in the first session, or maybe the first session will not be as great, but the more you do it, um, and that's something that um, I always say too, that every, every day, every practice, every session is, a, is different. You don't know what's going to happen, right? That's and so sometimes, true. like you said, we set intentions. Sometimes you set an intention <laughs> thinking that that's what you need. But when you start breathing, you just have something, you just have a different insight or a different emotion that's something completely different or actually maybe not completely different, but you get to the core of that. Yes, intent, behind right? it. Oh, yeah. The breath, again, it's spirit. It connects you to spirit. So if we can just trust that laying down to breathe is enough, uh, the answers are going to show up. It's going to take care of all of the, all, everything that needs to be done. Yeah. It's going to do the healing. It's going to do the shifts. And we just need to lie down and breathe. Yeah, it's amazing, the power of breath. 
It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. So now um, you run a business called Breathe On It, mm-hmm. right? Um, tell us about what, what was the main reason why you created Breathe On It and how was the maybe transition? Because you were not doing that before, right? Right. No, I did previous healing work, you know, Reiki master and a hypnotherapist and other things like that and massage as well. So I, I'm pretty used to doing healing and body work, but my primary focus was health and wellness coaching, mm-hmm. so nutrition, bringing in body, mind, spirit. And by the way, but you have show, the book, right? Yes, I have a book as well called Live, Look, Feel. It's a 12-week guide to live longer, look younger, and feel better mm-hmm. because that was – that always is my passion, looking good, feeling good. But more importantly, when Breathwork showed up, I knew that this was the answer that I was looking for. All of those years of searching for a modality, <laughs> it showed up and it's like, oh my God, one session literally transformed me. Mm-hmm. So I, I gave up pretty much everything else I was doing and just started to become a full-time Breathwork teacher and healer. So I delved in, did tons of breathing myself every day for months, Mm-hmm. And then studied with a couple of top teachers here in Los Angeles. And Breathe On It just came to me. I was talking to my web designer. And I was like trying to come up with a cool name for the company. And I literally said, you know, I'm going to go and breathe on it. And I'm going to come back. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> and then I realized, like, think on it or I'm going to go meditate on it. Mm-hmm. You can yeah, lay down and breathe it. or sleep on it. Yeah. yeah, you can literally lay down and breathe on it. You have a block, you have a challenge, you have a struggle, you need clarity, you need a message. Lay down and breathe and yeah. you're going to get your answers. So that was breathe on it. And then very soon after, well, maybe a year and a half or two years in, started to get students asking me if I could teach them, you know, the, the way that I taught. Mm-hmm. And so just stepped up and yeah, that was going to be my next question because I know that you run training courses. In fact, I was actually your first remote online you student. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs> um, and so you help healers, people that are already working in the healing um, field, but also aspiring healers, or even people who just want to incorporate more breath work in their daily life or their their well-being practices right so can you tell us a little bit more about your um training courses yeah it's evolved over time and you know having done some breathwork training obviously with other teachers there was there were some things that were were missing for me and i was like what about this and what about this and how do i do this Mm -hmm. and i wanted to just create a really thorough program that kind of you know checked all of the boxes not just the science of breath work or, you know, the benefits, but also like, how do I run a friggin' business? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, how do I, do I need waivers? Do I need insurance? How do I have a well-rounded approach? And so the introduction to breath work training, a healer training is the kind of the first level. And honestly, it's enough for people to step away and start to share breath work confidently. Mm-hmm. And it obviously originated doing it in groups in person, mm-hmm. but it's, kind of moved on now and, and it's really more of a one-on-one virtual experience now where I work with people all over the world remotely and it's super thorough and, and really yes, proud that's, of it. And that's a pro, right? Because you can work with people from different parts of the world. Yeah, and thanks to you for starting that virtual journey of training. That was really helpful. And then, yeah, and then I do an advanced training too for anyone who's done the introduction. And right now that is virtual. I'm doing one October 4th actually. And it's, all, it's going to be done as a virtual group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And hopefully soon we'll be able to have in-person again, right? Yes. The beauty of, of this whole virtual world is we realize how powerful we are as healers, as teachers, mm-hmm. that a computer can't get in the way. Yeah, and the energy transcends, <laughs> right? It's incredible, uh, the downloads that I will receive just from doing online classes. And, and so in a way, there's a lot of perks it helps us to fine tune even more, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, but of course I miss, I'm very hands-on. I love touching people. I love using yeah. pressure points. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one day. Yeah. And I guess in the future, you'll be able to offer both, right? And yes. when you have a balance, you can work from home, you can teach from home a few days and you can do a retreat or a weekend 
uh, in-person workshop. Exactly. You don't have to wear, you know, pants. You just wear a shirt. And <laughs> yes. And just like, relax. Like us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And uh, tell us about your product, uh, the Chakra Bombs, which I love. I actually have Thank mine you. right here. I'm thrilled. I have the whole, the whole kit right here. It looks nice. Yes. Yeah. I just, I applied around my throat just before our interview because you know communication expression that's actually the one i use the most because you know i'm always speaking singing absolutely um, and i guess when we when we have that awareness too of what chakras need more attention it's great i love them and i use them every day before my meditation or my breath work Good. um how did you come up with this idea and what are they for anybody who does doesn't know it yeah well i was thankful to my my two white witch aunts in canada i call them white witches because they're all always into healing and one of my aunts used to make homemade balms homemade salves from the earth and i just wow. kind of grew up using them in different ways and you know and then i've certainly seen chakra oils out there and was using mm -hmm. some from one of my teachers during my breathwork sessions but i laid down to breathe one day and literally got the entire download and that's the great thing about breathwork too mm -hmm. if you need some ideas or some inspiration just lay down and breathe and it showed up i literally got all the visuals i got the idea to create this this great set and went to the kitchen and started mm -hmm. to do more research around the oils and really fine-tune them and and the idea, really, what I wanted to do more than anything was was to help people bring spirituality into their home and to make it special. It's it can be tough to keep a consistent practice, right? Mm -hmm. Special and, and easy too, right? Because I don't understand personally. I don't understand that much about essential oils, but yes. I know that there are specific ones for 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 specific chakras, and I right. guess this is great because I don't have to learn so much about them and and. You know what I right. mean? It is the blend yes. of essential oils specifically for that chakra. So I only have to choose which chakra I want to work on or all of them. Yeah. And there's a lot of different corresponding research around which oils, you know, for which chakras and there's no set rule. So I brought in the research, but also wanted to make them unique, like and create something that's not out there. And also something that I loved, certain scents I don't like as much as others. And so, yeah, they start really woodsy, really heavy at, at the root, which we apply at the bottom of the feet. And then they kind of get uh, spicy <laughs> into the sexual and the sensual. And they uh, move up into more of a floral and lighter for the, for the crown. And there's, yeah, there's about four or five, sometimes six oils in each little tin. And it's a custom blend. So, yeah, we have the idea that yeah, every day I get a little ritual. I can light a candle. I can put on my balms, you know, put on my music and then just take some time for myself. Yeah. You know, that's the idea behind them. And I guess the intention helps too, you know, yes. like when you yes. get your, like I get my throat chakra and I put it around my, my throat and my neck. I'm also setting the intention. I'm also thinking mm. I'm using an affirmation or something like this. And I think this that's also right. helps. Power of Intention, Wayne Dyer, great book, <laughs> yeah. right? And the placebo effect. Also, I'm not saying that essential oils don't work because they do, but even the the idea that they're Absolutely. working. Absolutely, yeah. I will put on the heart chakra sometimes and I'll just start to cry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I've heard that from numerous other people. Coincidence? I don't think so. Mm -hmm, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. there's really something powerful that happens with, you know, with the sense, with the, with the ritual and the idea of having an intention also like you said or an affirmation mm -hmm. and yeah. then if you apply them before breath work i do all seven of them you can literally start to feel we say they ignite the chakras mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they really do there's like a pulsating and an opening it's amazing. yeah and it's it's a it's a great addition to the whole kit you know because when you combine the oils, you combine the breath, you combine the music, you know, the sound right. frequencies too, the intention. Palo Santo, some sage, <laughs> you know, you just, you bring in some, some spray, lavender spray. Yeah, you got everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, and I'll, I'll leave the links, um, everything on the description so that people know where they can find it. And we're getting almost to the end. And 
I have um, some questions that I call them fun and deep. Um, and I suggest that you just don't overthink much to answer them. Just like use your intuition. And usually the first thing that pops into your consciousness is what, what your message is supposed to convey. Okay. Okay. No pressure. Um, yeah, it's fun, fun, fun and deep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your definition of healing? Reconnecting with our true self. Beautiful. Continue the sentence. The power of breath can completely change your life. Um, if you could trade lives with one person, dead or alive, famous or not, just for the sake of experiencing a different human journey, who would it be and why? Wow. You know, the first person that came to mind was Wayne Dyer. <laughs> Yeah, I just I love that man so much. Yeah. And to know what it's like to, to touch so many lives, to be mm -hmm. a best-selling author, to be so such a confident speaker, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. really to kind of live it. Yeah. 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 I, I love him, too. I think I would pick him, too. <laughs> yeah. um, next one is um, also a hypothetical question. Because we know that our, our souls, uh, our soul is shapeless, formless, and infinite. Mm -hmm. But if you had to pick three words to tattoo your soul, meaning you would carry those three words in your soul's DNA for lifetimes to come, which three words would you choose to tattoo your soul? inspiration, transformation, and love. Beautiful. I actually have love here. <laughs> uh, beautiful. That's not your soul. That's your own. About my soul. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. And, and the last question is uh, about soul art. Um, so the concept of soul art is essentially your soul's purpose. So it's that thing that um, comes through you, you know, the deepest expression of your being that fulfills you and also serves the world and the awakening of humanity. It doesn't necessarily mm. have to be art. Um, in my case, yes, it's music, singing, writing, teaching. Um, but what would you say is your soul art? It's a great question. I mean, again, the word inspiration comes up. You know, it's such a, a motivator for me. And I, I feel a part of my mission is to help inspire others. Mm -hmm. And I would say I do that partly through teaching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and partly through just walking the walk and, you know, and working on myself and moving through my blocks to inspire others to do the same. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's, <clears throat> I would say that's big. And I'm really kind of good at beautifying spaces and beautifying mm -hmm. things and making things beautiful. And I think that inspires yeah, me. Like I do some space in, in your well, office. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You know, and I do some painting and I do, I do some singing and I try to, yeah, I try to make things more beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So would, would you say breathe on it is your purpose? After all you've gone through, now you're able to share it with the world and help other fellow humans heal and find yes. that freedom and that happiness yes and i would say i've been searching my entire life and then when this showed up it was like i knew i had found my calling so yes i would say absolutely absolutely living on purpose doing what i'm supposed to be doing will it expand and grow and evolve and will mm -hmm. you know i have more products and other things yes mm -hmm. but it's all tied into this idea of, of healing ourselves and of living our best life and knowing that it's possible yeah, and, and, and your business, your products, everything is it's how it's manifested, right? It's the manifestation right. of that purpose. And actually, I forgot, you have this upcoming 11-week on, um, online program, right? Oh, yes. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about it just before we finish? And also, how 
people can connect with you? Sure. Yeah. I created Permanently Shifted. It's an 11 week uh, process that I take people through. It's all done one-on-one right now, it's virtual or in person if people want, if they're in Los Angeles. And it's a really, really, it's a deep dive. It's, it's for people who <clears throat> are pretty much tried everything, who have basically given up and lost hope that mm-hmm. they can move through some of their patterns, addictions, and old ways of being. And I have a, a process in a way that I know works. And so by the end of my promise is that they will be permanently shifted. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, yeah, again, we dig in, we do a lot of ancestral work. We'll do a lot of work around emotions, addictions, around self-love and acceptance and forgiveness and, and a bunch of other things, but we also customize it to whatever mm-hmm. my clients are looking for. So that's, yeah, that's an exciting, exciting program mm-hmm. and people, people can get a lot discovery of attention call. from you too right yes a lot of attention every single week we work together lots of bonuses involved in, as well in the program so yeah people can book a discovery call on my website and we can talk more about mm-hmm. about it just to see if it's even something that fits for both of us right and what's your website yes my website it's breathe on it.net and the people can email me through the website, but Instagram is also something I use a lot and that's mm-hmm. breathe on it with J J A Y. And that's my Facebook page as well. And then of course, chakra balms is C H A K R A chakra balms.com. Yes. I will make sure to leave the links in the description and I want to acknowledge you for um, your courage to not only face your fears and traumas, but to also turn them into your purpose and help Mm. us fellow humans to heal. And I want to thank you for shining your light. And on a personal level, I want to thank you for an amazing friend that you are. You've helped me so much in so many ways, and I appreciate you. And I'm grateful to share this journey of life with you. Well, I receive that so much and thank you for that. And I feel exactly the same. Thank you. Thank you. Much love. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you've never experienced breath work before or would like to try it out with Jay, he offers a free breath work session in his website. All you have to do is go to www.breatheonit.net and download his free breathwork session. You'll be able to find the links on the show's notes. And once again, if this has brought you value, please subscribe to my podcast and take a screenshot of it. Share it to your Instagram story and be sure to tag me and Jay so that we know that it brought you value and your friends may benefit from this episode too. As always, keep shining your light, keep your heart open, and let love lead the way. I love you. See you on the next episode.